morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to New Direction Church International as we are entering into the glorious presence of the Lord. We honor him this morning. We magnify the Lord Jesus. We are grateful this morning for his presence and for his glory. I don't know, it's something about this song, Forever is a Long Time. That's how long I'll love you, forever. Because it makes me think about how much God loves you and I. Sometimes we don't love God back the way God loves us. But God will always love us forever. And this is why the scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen, when you quit on God, God refuses to quit on you. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I love serving a kind of God who can look past my faults, my flaws, my insecurities, my guilt sometimes, and my inability to love me and cause me to shine and prosper even when I don't feel like a star. Somebody missed what I just said. You need to grab that and say, God causes me to shine and prosper even when I don't feel like a star. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome into the worship presence of the Lord on this morning. Welcome to New Direction Church International. I'm Apostle Jarrell Beard, and on behalf of the New Direction Church family, my lovely wife, Pastor Angela Beard, we welcome you into the presence of the Lord on this morning. So come on in with a light soul and a light spirit and a light heart this morning. Let every burden be lifted. Every trouble, I pray it just disappear. And it melts right off of you as you of the true and the living God. Hallelujah. Oh, we honor Lord the Lord for he is good. Amen. As you're logging on and getting tuned in this morning, I do pray that you will do a launch party or watch party or share. Amen. This morning's service because somebody needs a word. And you got to let God use you as an evangelist this morning so that somebody could receive the word of the true and living God. And I tell you, there is a word from the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. So come on, worship him as you come into this space. Get ready for God to do something supernatural. Listen, I'm already warring on your behalf. I rebuke every demon, every ungodly force, every spirit that does not represent the blood-bought precious presence of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We cast you down from Calvary's cross in the name of Jesus, that name that is above all name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I just decree an atmosphere at home of worship, an atmosphere in this building of worship, an atmosphere in your heart of worship, but you gotta agree with me. In order for you to have worship, you gotta say this house is a place of worship, this car is a place of worship, this space is a place of worship because I'm coming to God this morning for something. I wanna hear from my Abba Father, not man, but God, the God in the man. Come on, somebody. If you pray, he'll speak, he'll preach, he'll bless you this morning with a relevant word that'll touch your life, that'll touch your child's life. Oh my God. Woo! This kind of word right here will tear down the walls that are against you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. I feel the power of God, the presence. I'm a worshiper. If you didn't know, I love getting in his presence. Letting God just minister to my heart. Let God just talk to me about his grace and his mercy and his blessings and his ideas of who I am. And come on, somebody. His ideas of the church and his love for his people. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. So come on, worship him in this moment. Ooh, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands at home. Come on. Bless the Lord. Oh, shabba baba shada. Come on and lift up your hands. Come on, give him worship. Uh, this is how this is how you come out of psychological trauma. This is how you come out of deep hurt and pain. This is how you stir up the joy on the inside. Come on, somebody. Woo! Oh my God. The word of the Lord said, set your mind not on things below in the earth, 
but on the things above that's in heaven. So what, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of a good report. Oh my God, the word says think on these things. I came to challenge you this morning to think about the good reports, not the bad ones. To think about the good things and not the bad ones. To think about the blessings and not the curses. To think about the joy and not the pain. Come on, somebody, I need you to, woo, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, I'll praise him all by myself. He's been too good. 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 He that I'm according that much still in the He's been too good. 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 Somebody already know. Him. Oh, he's been too good. He's been too good. He's been too good. He's answered too many prayers. He's walked with me through too many storms. For me not to know that he's good. Oh my God. And then he guaranteed me in Romans 8 and 28 that all things worketh together for them. Shout good, 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 good. The good, the good, the good, the good, the good, the good of them. The good, he's working good out of bad, he's working good out of ugly, he's working good out of difficult, he's working good. Uh, that's all he is, is good. So he's a God of the turnaround. Turn it around for your good. Shabakurem de stile kundala boto se salaro. Lebo tu chukundala ba si de re. Telebo kushande re. Turning, turning, turning. He's a turning God. He's a turning God. Turning it. He'll turn. God, I know it's hard, but he'll turn it. He turns it. He turns it, 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 Oh my God, that's why That's why all things are cyclical. That's why the sun is a circle. The moon is a circle. The, the time goes circular. The seasons go round and around circular. The earth spins on its axis circular because he's the God of the turn. He turns, he turns, he turns. He turns, he turns, he turns. He, he turns, he turns, he turns it around. He turns it around. Oh my God, he turns it around. He turns it around. He turns it around. I don't know. That's not my word this morning. I, I've got a word from the Lord, but this is a, it's the first word. Remember, he turns it. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who this particular exhortation is for, but he turns it, fella. <laughs> Ma'am, he turns it. He turns it. He turns it. <laughs> he turns it. He turns it. He is no koda. He turns it. I, 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 I had a golf ball sized tumor at the base of my brain, but he, he turned it. He, it's gone. He, 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 it was, he turned it. He, he turned it. He, he, they thought I was going to die, but he, he turned, he, he, he turned it. He, he'll, he'll turn it. He, he'll turn it. He'll, he'll turn it. Oh my God. He, he, he is Shaddai. He'll turn it around. Around, uh, around, shit, they can't do Around, around, you turn it around. Oh, God, I thank you this morning for your precious presence. This morning, I feel like worshiping. Amen. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. We're about to enter in the intercessory prayer. Woo, I hope I can preach after this. My God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for his good and his mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I, I just feel like praying this morning. Would you pray with me? Would you, would you take a moment at home and 
Just pray your own prayer. I need you to talk to God about those things that are most precious to your heart this morning. I don't mean to be sentimental this morning and overly uh, compassionate, but I can feel his presence working in a worship sense on this morning. Now, Lord, reach, reach down, reach, reach down. It's called your hesed. It's the Hebrew word hesed for loving kindness. It means when one who is superior reaches down and cradles one who is inferior. So God, would you reach down and cradle us this morning and cuddle us this morning and hold us tight this morning with your hesed, God, with your loving kindness, your tender mercy. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you. Will you love someone's worries away this morning, God? Would you cradle and love their tension away, God? In the name of Jesus, would you just cradle and love their frustration away? Would you cradle and love their anger or their hateration out of their bodies? Sunday, they go, cause them to be compassionate. If you just hug them tight this morning, God, with your presence and wrap your, your loving arms around them this morning with your presence, God. Oh, Jesus. They're coming out even now. They're coming out. I, I see someone just tears of joy flowing. They're coming out in the name of Jesus. They're coming out. They're coming out. They're coming out. They're coming out of that low place. They're coming out in the name of Jesus. They're coming out. Father, I bless you and I thank you, Lord. They're coming out, God. Forgiveness is flowing and peace is flowing and joy is flowing, God. I thank you. Oh, God, I need you to help me preach this morning because I just want to worship. I just want to worship you. I want to worship you. I want to worship you. I wish I was by myself. I'd, I'd get on my face, God, and I would worship you. Help me to preach. Help me to give me the power. Katun delisiyala. For your glory, God, for your honor, <laughs> and for your praise. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, let the church of God say amen and glorify the Father. Glorify him in this place. Glorify him, glorify him, glorify him, and magnify him. Glorify God and magnify him in this place. Oh, my God. Oh, God, God wants me to send you a loving hug this morning and a loving, a loving embrace on his behalf this morning. God loves you, and he cares for you. Woo, hallelujah. I feel my soul saying, as the deer longs for water, my soul longs and thirsts for you, oh, God, for your presence, for your glory, for your honor. Woo, y'all better pray for me this morning because it's... it's I'm a worshiper. This is my personal space, and I love being in my personal space with God and he and I alone, and he can just work on me and fix me and tell me some stuff I need to straighten up and tell me some stuff I'm doing well and tell me how he's pleased with me. Show me how I'm his royal child. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. This morning, if I if I can muster up the energy, because I'm in a worship space, to preach the gospel this morning, I would like to invite your attention to Luke chapter 11 and then Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 11, we'll look at verse 5 through 13. And in Luke chapter 18, we will only look at verse 1. Don't get ahead of me. Luke chapter 11 is where we're going first. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Father, may the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable. <laughs> my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Luke chapter 11, my prayer, my subject this morning is prayer, the breakthrough contract. Prayer, the breakthrough contract. And I've titled it this way because by God's agreement with me to be my God and that I would be his child, by God's agreement with me that I call on him and he would answer he has divinely made a contract with me that if I call on him, he shall provide for me. It's my breakthrough contract. It's how I come out. It's how I come through. It's how I make it. It's how I survive. It's how I thrive. Prayer is my breakthrough contract that if I work my prayer life, my prayer life will work for my breakthrough. Can I talk to somebody? If I work my prayer life, my prayer life will work. I need you to type that in the subject line. I need you to type that uh, online. If I work my prayer life, my prayer life will work. I think I got a church already in here. If I work my prayer life, my prayer life will work. Prayer, the breakthrough contract. Hey, Shabbat, in Jesus' name. I'm excited. Now, listen, listen. Here in Luke chapter 11 and verse 5 is where I want to pick up. And he, capitalized, meaning Jesus, said to them, his disciples, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loads. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. Don't ever go to God with nothing to set before him. Okay, that's not my preaching, but I ooh, God, I just want to bless somebody. Set your heart before him. Set your motives before him. Set your soul. Don't ever go to God and not set a gift before him. Mm, I feel like preaching. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot arise and give to you question mark. I want you to pay attention to the question mark because Jesus is not saying this is what he's going to say. He's saying if your friend come at midnight for bread for a, someone who has journeyed and come to him, is he going to say, no, I'm not going to give it to you because it's midnight and my kids are asleep? He's asking you the question. Okay? He says, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and and give to him as many as he needs. He said, I'm not just going, he's not going to give it to you at midnight because you're his friend. He's going to give it to you at midnight because you had the audacity to show up and knock on the door on, for some bread at midnight, and he needs you to leave so he can go back to bed. So he's going to go ahead and give you the bread. <laughs> A wise man will go ahead and give it to you. <laughs> Verse 9, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Uh-oh. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who acts receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks him for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, come on somebody, how much more, shout much more, will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Oh my God. I want somebody to get this message and this word right here in the name of Jesus. Go to Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. And that's where we will put our final text on this morning. Luke 18 verse 1 says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. So this particular parable in chapter 18 reflects the same nature of the parable in chapter 11. They're both are talking about somebody persistent in prayer. But Luke starts out explaining and summarizing the parable so that you can understand it before you even read it. 
because he says in verse 1, Jesus spoke the parable to them, meaning that men ought always to pray and not faint. In other words, the whole reason for the parable, the understanding, the interpretation of the parable is this. Keep praying and don't lose heart. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So he sums it up before he even gives it to you. Luke said this is the reason that he spoke this prayer. This is the interpretation of this parable, rather, that Jesus spoke. Prayer, the breakthrough contract. You may be seated, stand, whatever you need to do with the presence of the Lord as we enter his word on this morning. Every day in my life, every day of my life, I seek to get a prayer through to God. Daily, I'm taking circumstances and situations to him, big or small, I don't care the ramifications around the circumstance, whether I feel I got it or not, I still go to God in prayer so that I have his confirmation, his affirmation, or his power in, and presence in the thing in which I'm doing. I, I cannot sit here and say that I hardly approach anything without prayer. I take everything to God. Because I've been doing this long enough to know and to understand that God just might surprise you. If you pray to him about it, God, God, God has a way of shocking you or surprising you with his goodness and surprising you with his breakthrough and surprising you with his mercy. So it is good, it is beneficial and wise to take things to God. Prayer, my brothers and sisters, is our covenant component of my breakthrough contract with God. Prayer is how I talk to him. Prayer is how I lean on him. Prayer is how I hear from him. Prayer is how I come to know his will for my life. Prayer is earth thing, as we say in the urban culture. Prayer is earth thing. Say prayer is earth thing. Because I know that I am praying to my Abba Father, or Abba, a term Jesus used, a term of endearment, means my good daddy, my daddy who loves me, my daddy who doesn't judge me. I can come crying on his shoulder and say, Abba, help me, and he will have mercy and tenderness towards me, and he will bless me and bring me out in the midst of my struggles and storm. Who am I preaching to in this place? My Abba is the one that I cry out to, and he knows me as a righteous son. He knows me as an heir to the throne of grace. He knows me, ladies and gentlemen, as a kinsman of Abraham. I have the Abrahamic blessing on my life, meaning that he will be with me and I will be his child and he will bless those who bless me and he will curse those who curse me. I'm under the Abrahamic covenant and so when he looks at me, he sees the covenant of blessings, the covenant of sonship and the covenant of inheritance on my life. Somebody shout, I'm a kinsman of Abraham. God sees me as a royal priesthood. He sees me after his child, Jesus Christ. So when I cry to my Abba, he doesn't see the sinner that's messed up. He doesn't see the disobedient person that won't do his will. He sees a son or a daughter that's coming to his father saying, Daddy, I need you. And Daddy, I need you right now. Do I have somebody in here who knows he's your Abba father? I'm preaching already up in this place this morning. And here is Jesus after he has gone and prayed and his disciples then see Jesus pray and they come to him wanting to know how to pray in the first few uh, verses of chapter 11, verse 1 through 4. And Jesus, in response, makes a breakthrough covenant with the disciples. And the contract is if you ask, you shall receive. If. You seek, you shall find. If you knock, the door shall be open unto you. I don't know about you, but when I hear the vernacular of the conversation, the dialogue to me sounds like a contract. If you do A, I'll do B. Can I talk to somebody? If you do B, I'll do C. Come on, somebody. If you do C, I'll do D. If you ask, 
you shall receive. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, the door shall be open. That sounds like a contract. Somebody say, that's my breakthrough contract. Now I know how to come out. Now I know how to get healed. Now I know how to get delivered. Now I know how to assure that I'm in the right places at the right times with the right people. And when a wall is in front of me, I know how to get it down because if I pray, Oh, if I seek after it, uh, if I knock, hallelujah. Oh, God says, if you do something, I'll do something. If you show up, I'll show up. If you believe that I believe with you. Oh, Jesus said, whatever you pine on earth is already bound in here. Whatever you lose, God said, I'll lose it too. Who am I preaching to? Shout, I got a breakthrough contract, baby. I don't have to stay sick. I don't have to stay in low the bar. I don't have to stay in poverty. I don't have to stay in jacked up relationships. I don't have to keep uh, my love life doesn't have to become a revolving door of jokers coming in and out of my world because I'll pray the right ones in and I'll pray the wrong ones out. Shut I got a breakthrough contract. You've got a dance and a praise right there because I got a way out of no way. I got a highway in the day. Oh, come on. I got a highway in the wilderness and a river in the desert. Somebody say, oh, I got a breakthrough contract. Don't make me call my daddy. I'm going to call my daddy on you. Devil, I'll call my daddy on you. Hater, I'll call my daddy on you. Cancer, I'll call my daddy on you. Broke, I'll call my daddy on you. COVID, I'll call my daddy on you. Ah, Jesus. Jesus is at the point of the breakthrough contract. And he's just finished praying and his disciples want to know how to pray. And Jesus modestly trains oh my god them in a basic approach to prayer but then uses a parable to convince them that if they remain faithful in prayer the breakthrough will come to pass somebody say stay faithful and then in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 he summarizes his teaching by saying that he taught them the parable meaning that men ought to always pray and don't lose heart in other words, don't you ever stop praying. Oh, y'all need to hear me. Uh, tap yourself and say, self, don't you ever stop praying. So the parable becomes clear that Jesus' message back to his disciple is not so much how you pray. They said, teach us how to pray. He said, it's not so much how you pray, but how you believe what you pray. Can I preach it like I feel it up in here? It ain't about praying on your knees or praying standing up or praying being quiet or praying when music is playing. It's about how you believe what you pray. Oh, God. Can I preach it up in here? It's not how to pray. It's how to believe in prayer. Can I preach it up in here? Somebody shout. It's not how you pray. It's how you believe what you pray. Do I have a breakthrough saint up in this place? Somebody who knows if you just believe on him, you shall have what you say. Do I have a church up in this place who can say God is my provider? Who can say Jehovah Jireh? He is my provider. Jehovah, Jehovah Shammah. He is my God that is there. He is Jehovah Sit Canoe. He's the God of my righteous. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's the God of my peace. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's the God that's my banner. Can I preach it like I feel it? He is El Shaddai, the old sufficient God who can do anything he pleases for anyone he desires at any time that he wants to. Do I have somebody up in this place? I don't mean to preach, but it feels good to know that I have a God who says if you believe, you can receive. Somebody give him a praise right where you are. Right where you are, oh God. I'm trying to, oh my God. <laughs> I got to get out of this intro, this background. Hold on. I got to get to my sermon. So, so he uses a parable. A parable of a friend who was persistent in getting bread in order to be hospitable to a friend who suddenly appeared 
at midnight. Say midnight. Uh, hospitality, my brothers and sisters, is everything in the Jewish culture. Can I preach it? Their relational world centered around how friendly and how kind and how mannerable you could be to a guest regardless of the circumstances. So in their culture, relational equity meant everything. In their culture, friendships and relationships were just as equitable as gold and silver because what they couldn't pay for, because they had a family orientation, they could get from a neighbor or a friend. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me up in here. I wish that American culture, I wish that church culture, uh, I wish our neighborhoods would get back to a place where relational equity meant more than silver and gold. I ain't gonna, oh, Y'all don't want me to go there, y'all. All these mad Christians and hating Christians and angry believers walking around here fighting all the time. Mad about this, mad. Don't you know who I am to you? Don't you know I can be a blessing when you ain't got nothing? Don't you know I'll give you the shirt off my back? You ought to, My mama said you can get more flies or bees with honey than you can get with vinegar. I wish I had somebody up in here who could be nice. Slap yourself and say, be nice now. Be nice, be nice, be nice, be nice. Be nice. Hospitality was everything. Hospitality was everything. So this is why the man in the parable gets up at midnight and goes to a friend in the dark when he know the man is asleep to try to get some bread because in the culture, when you came to a person's house in Jewish culture, they would immediately start washing your feet. They would immediately find some food and lay out a table for you. This is why Mary was losing her mind. I'm sorry, Martha was losing her mind when Jesus came to Mary and Martha's house because Martha was trying to be hospitable according to the Jewish culture and get some food on that table for Jesus. But Mary was so in awe at his presence, she threw away all the religion. I wish I was preaching to somebody. See, when you get in awe about his presence, you get away from religion and tradition because you know whom the Son set free is free indeed. You ain't bound no more by so much traditional church, but you're free to be who you are and you're free to accept other people for who they are and their anointing and their gift and you don't sit back like a hypocrite like a Pharisee trying to judge other people when you can't even keep the law yourself. I wish I had a witness up in here. Hospitality and friendship is everything. <laughs> oh, stay with me. So whenever a guest or stranger came in your house, you would kiss them on the cheek. You would wash their feet, and you would get them something to eat. This is why when Mary Magdalene came and bust in to a lunch party that Jesus was having with a bunch of Pharisees and tax collectors, and she got out on her face and bust her alabaster box open, one year's worth of perfume, broke the alabaster box open, and took it and began to anoint Jesus' His head and begin to cry and wash his feet with her hair. And the Pharisee said, if he knew who that was, he wouldn't let her do that. And Jesus stopped him in his words and said, this woman, ever since I've been in here, this woman has washed my feet. She has kissed me on the cheek. She has anointed my head like culture says she's supposed to. He said, but you ain't done nothing since I've been in here. Quit judging people who working for God and serving God when you sitting on your blessed assurance doing absolutely positively nothing. I wish I had a witness up in this way. Uh-uh, don't you cut me off now. Stay here till I get to the other good part that you're going to shout about. Oh, <laughs> Woo! When his presence show up, all the paradigms and all the process. Uh, of protocol begin to shake and rumble because the God of everything just showed up and because he's the God of everything you can't put him in anything you just gotta let him be let, let him be in you, let him be around you, let him be for you let him be behind you, let him do it for you cause he's God all by him, shut, he, he can't be content, he's God and God alone, he's God and he's God all by himself. I got to get to my sermon. So the host went to a friend at midnight and Jesus said he was persistent. And that's why he got the breakthrough. This Greek use of the word anidia 
The Greek word persistence is an idea. <laughs> and it means to have no constraints and to be shameless. I think I'm talking to somebody right here. This message uh, for the disciples and for you and for I is to cast off the shame of believing God for your breakthrough and cast off the restraints and ask him for whatever you need. He is the God who can do exceedingly abundantly above anything that you actually think. So let me go over that again. Jesus says that the man was an idea. Jesus says that the woman was an idea. In other words, the woman didn't have no shame. She didn't care how many times she went to the judge in Luke chapter 18. The man didn't have no shame. He didn't care that it was at midnight. He was going to get the bread because that's what he needed and that's what he was believing. This boy going to get up and give me some bread. So in other words, you got to get to a radical place in your prayer life where you ain't got no shame about what you ask God for. You don't care who know about it. You don't care if they hear you pray. You don't care if they hear your testimony. Yeah, I'm believing God for healing. Yeah, I'm believing God for a house. Yeah, I'm believing God for a doctrine. Yeah, I'm believing God for a miracle. Yes, that's right. I said it. I'm crazy about prayer life. I'm a radical. I done took the chains off. I'm out the box. I'm unhinged. I'm on overflow. He said be radical in your prayer life. In other words, it's time for you to shift in your prayer life from conservative to radical. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody in here now. It's time for you to shift uh, in what you believe in God for from normal to abnormal. Ah, it's time for you to shift from ordinary to extraordinary. It's time for you to just stop believing God that he going to wake you up in the morning and see you through the work and protect you to get back home. It's time for you to believe God for a miracle, believe him for a breakthrough, and believe him for supernatural things that only God can do. Somebody shout, I got a breakthrough contract. Oh, my God, I got to preach this to somebody up in here. I need to help you get to a whole new place. Shot, I'm going to a whole new place. I got to help you get there. I got to preach you there. Are you ready for me to preach you there? Shot, I got radical prayer. Say it again. I got radical prayer. Say I pray without shame. I believe without shame. I'm unleashed in my prayer. I'm radical in what I believe God for. I believe him for miracles. I believe him for breakthroughs. Somebody shout, I'm the radical person. Shout, if you want a breakthrough, touch and agree with me. I'm radical enough to help you get there. You got to shift from your cute, sophisticated eloquence <laughs> of, of, of gigantuous uh, diction <laughs> and get to a place where you stop being a philologist, which is somebody who studied the etymology of words. Oh my God, okay, I, I gotta, you gotta get to a place where you stop being a philologist and you just trying to use some words and be cute. You gotta get to a point where you just write down ugly with it and say, Lord, I believe you in the name of Jesus that my body is going to be healed in Jesus' name. Not law, well, if it be your kind will, most gracious God. And, no, you got to get radical. You got to believe God for something big. Oh, Lord, help me up in here. So it's time to shift into the radical zone. Because it's not just praying in a radical way. It's believing for a radical thing in a radical way. Y'all going, oh, I'm going to make sure it, it hits home. I'm going to be theologically sound with you so can't nobody come and deconstruct the message. Come on in here, somebody. Shout, I believe for radical things in a radical way. Now give God three seconds of praise if you're there right now. Shout, Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so my first, my first point of construct uh, in, 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 in looking at this message uh, on this morning is that access requires axing. Can you get that, my brother, my sister? I know you want it, but have you asked for it? Because access, according to Jesus, requires an ask. Your next breakthrough, my brothers and sisters, is in behind your next prayer. Can I say it? The access is in the ask. 
and there are healings and deliverance that are ready to manifest in your life and mine. But the access requires that we must trust God enough to ask him for the thing that we are desiring in our hearts. Come on, come on. Trust God enough to ask him for the thing that we're desiring in our hearts. I, I, I want to ask God for it, but I'm scared that he might not do it. I'm scared to go to God about it. I came to tell somebody, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he's going to direct your path to the thing that you've been praying about. Can I preach it like I feel it in this place? Because, see, we often fall into the, we often fail to ask because we have a faith problem. We got a faith problem. But I came to lift the yoke of doubt off your mind and the chains of silence off your lips that you could boldly ask God. Here's your shout right here. I know you had a shout moment, but here's your shout right here. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16 says, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but in all points was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Here it is. So let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help. I said grace to help in a time of need. In other words, the word tells me that if I boldly go to him, I ain't, oh God, I wish I had somebody. If I radically go to God, if I take anything and everything to God, the Bible says you just might find grace, which means unmerited favor, which means kindness, which means the gift that keeps on giving. In other words, if you go ahead and ask God, hallelujah, you just might get what you ask for. Do I have somebody out here who can boldly go before God? Oh my God. Listen, I feel like I need to put some word on this because Psalms 50 and 15 says, call upon me in the day of trouble. Do I have anybody in trouble? Call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. He said, if you call on me in the day of trouble, I'll get you out and you're going to start shouting. Do I have a witness up in here? If you call on me when you're in trouble, I'm going to pull you out and then you're going to have a praise party. Want to have a praise party? Pray for First. Do I have, oh, y'all ain't hearing me up in this place. He said, I'll put praise in your mouth because I'll pull you out if you just call on my name. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call me and I'll answer you. See, you calling your mama. You calling your friends. You calling yourself. He said, uh-uh, uh-uh. Ain't now one of them going to bust this devil up like I can. Ain't now one of them going to get rid of the disease. He said, call he said, call me and I shall answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. In other words, God says, sometimes you can call me and I'll blow your mind. Y'all ain't hearing me up in here. You want your mind blown? Pray first. Y'all gonna make me act a fool up in here. He said, you want to see something you ain't never seen? Pray to me. I'll take you somewhere you ain't never been. I'll show you some stuff you didn't ever think would happen. I'll bust your intellect up. I'll bust your psychology up. I'll bust up your little logical thinking of cognitive relativity. And I'll bust up, oh God, I'll cause a phenomenon to, to happen in your head. And it'll cause you to... The Bible says wonder. God said, I'll make you a wonder. Wonder means to scratch your head in amazement. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. God said, I'll make people wonder how you got blessed. Wonder how you got healed. Wonder how you got here. <laughs> oh. oh, see the access requires the acts. But the key, my brothers and sisters, is in the relationship. You can't come to a God that you don't know. <laughs> you can't show up once a year like it's a family reunion and expect me to know you like that. <laughs> because at the family reunion, I might come talk to you. We might share a talk for a minute. 
But who you gonna see me spending most of my time with is the people that's a part of my cluster. It's the people I've been talking to day in and day out. The people who've been calling me month in and month out. Those are the ones I'm gonna spend the most time to. So don't come to the family reunion and you ain't talked to me all year. And just because we ain't talking about much, you walk away telling me I was acting funny. I wasn't acting funny. We just stood a bit of strangers. We just kinda like strangers, buddy. We just kinda like strangers, buddy. I wish I had a witness up in this place. So God said, I ain't ignoring you. We just kind of like strangers. You know, we don't talk that much. Can I preach it like I feel it up in here? So he tells him, you got to ask. And the second construct I want to build in this message this morning is don't grow weary waiting. Don't. Listen to me. Don't grow weary waiting. Because in the wait is where the rubber meets the road. Woo, I feel like preaching that. Someone once said that patience is a virtue. Yet how many of us have mastered patience? Raise your hand if you've mastered patience. Uh, there, there are but a few of us that get to that place in life where we can, we can wait no matter how long it. Yeah, preach this with me. Ah, uh, y'all doing good. I love this message y'all preaching this month. I can wait as long as it takes, but without patience in the process of God's deliverance, we can grow weary enough to quit calling on him. You didn't show up last time, so I ain't seeing nothing. You didn't save my mama, so I ain't praying for you. You, you didn't deliver me when I asked you to, to deliver me out, so you ain't real. We well, ain't talking. I ain't talking to you about it. I might as well not talk to you about it. You didn't do nothing the last time. You said that let me go to jail. You let me go to jail. I ain't, no use. I ain't talking to you. And that's where the enemy has his most fun with our destiny and purpose. It is in the wilderness of waiting that we lose supernatural consciousness. That God doesn't work on our timeline. That he is God. And we, he is potter. And we are the clay. So we point our finger in arrogance. Say, no. No, no, no. Not praying. <sighs> Ooh, God. But I want to help somebody. Oh, when we take into account all of the scripture on prayer, we understand that God will give you anything you pray for, not everything you pray for. He said, I can give you anything. I didn't say I was going to give you everything. I'm the God that can do anything. But I did not say I was going to do everything in your life. He said, I can do some things, but I never said I was going to do everything. He said, you can ask me for anything. Ask me for anything, anything in the world. But I didn't say I was going to do everything in the anything that you asked. Come on, come on. Oh, my God. See, it suggests that there is nothing that you can't ask, but there are things he reserves the right not to do. Oh, y'all here? We fail to ask because we grow weary waiting for a yes. We grow weary praying because the answer doesn't align with our deadline. Well, the absence of a yes often means the presence of a test. When the yes is gone, it's because the test has shown up. Woo! So if you can learn to keep your hand in God's hand when the test has shown up, mm, 
Woo! The Bible says, now God tested Abraham and said, Abraham, Abraham, give me your son, your only son in which you love, and sacrifice him on the mountain of Moriah. <laughs> the test was present when the yes was absent. Oh, you, you thinking God said no. He didn't say no. He said, wait, can I preach it like a, he's testing your endurance, uh, testing your belief, uh, testing your faith, uh, testing your patience, uh, grooming you and growing you into the person that he's called you to be. So a yes just means a test or a yes. The absence of a yes is the presence of a test, rather. And so... I got to give you your shout because Isaiah 40, 27 and 31, somebody about to shout here. Isaiah 40, 27 through 31 says, why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, that my way is hidden from the Lord? Why you say, and my just claim is passed over by God. In other words, why are you saying God ain't paying me no attention? And why are you saying God has passed me over? Then he says, have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? Neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increaseth strength. Uh, even the youth shall fall and be weary, uh, and the young man shall utterly fail. Uh, but those who wait upon the Lord uh, shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. Uh, they shall run and not be weary. Uh, they shall walk and not faint. Uh, he said, they that wait upon the Lord uh, shall renew their strength. Uh, now that word renew in the Hebrew uh, means to restore. It means to invigorate and it means to replace just like the grass that has withered. I feel like preaching to somebody up in here because God said if you wait on me and you get weary, if you just keep waiting, even though your strength has faded, I'll bring it back like the grass coming up in the spring. Even though your strength may be cut down like the grass in the springtime, I'll cause new growth. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. He said, if you just wait on me, I'll cause new growth to happen in your life. Somebody shout, I'm away, I'm away, I'm away. Here comes your shout right here. One definition for wait means to exchange. It means to exchange one set of clothing for another. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, let me go back. One definition of the word renew means to exchange one set of clothing for another. And it's right there that I hear the scripture saying of the Lord that he will give me the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I wish I was preaching to somebody in here right now who understand that God is about to take that depression off you and cause you to praise. He's about to take stress off you, wear it off you. If you just wait on him, he gonna change your praise clothes and you gonna go from grave clothes to praise clothes. Do I have somebody here who ready to switch it up? Slap somebody say, Switch it up, switch it up, switch it up, switch it up. It's time to invigorate somebody, God. It's time to exchange somebody, God. And I feel like praying for you right now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you would renew somebody's strength. Invigorate somebody, Lord. Exchange their stress for their blessing in the name of Jesus. Release the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I need somebody who's been battling stress and depression to begin to praise God right now. Somebody who's been battling worry and fear to begin to praise God right now. Somebody who's been going through the go through, who's been down and out, who's been disgusted and busted. I need you to shift and put on a praise garment and stand up in your living room and give God a shout of praise and give him a dance of glory. Oh, I feel like preaching up in here. 
This right here is your moment of praise. This is your moment of praise. This is your shift. I've been preaching about it. I've been talking about it. This is your shift right now. It's time for you to praise him. It's time for you to lift him up. It's time for you to pray your way through. You go wait on him. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, praise him. Come on, come on. Praise him where you at. Come on, praise your way out. Praise until you feel better. Praise until you're thinking better. Praise until you're believing better. Come on, praise him. Pray. Woo, I'm preaching in here better than you. Oh, my God. Oh. See, don't grow weary. Why are you waiting? Don't go weary while you're waiting. If you just praise him on a regular. <laughs> praise him on a regular. And he'll show up in the irregular. You ain't hearing what I'm saying. You ain't feeling how I'm preaching. Now, come on. Talk to me. Don't leave me up here by myself. We having fun. My third construct in this, this word this morning is that you believe that you are blessed. I want you to believe, believe. something on that. I feel something on that. I feel something on that. I feel the Y'all gotta excuse me for a minute. I feel something on that. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing on that. I feel the power of God on Oh You got to take you go, oh my God, I might have to turn this camera on and go and do what I do in the presence of my God. Good God Almighty! God help me. Woo! Help me, Lord. Oh my God. You're down too low not to believe. You're hurting too bad not to believe. I believe that that's what got Joseph out of the well. I believe when they, when Joseph's brothers threw him down in that well, I believe Joseph was in the bottom of that pit saying, y'all can't kill me if you try. I believe he thought I'm coming out of here because God showed me who I was and my death is not in the well, but my death is sitting on a king's throne. Do I have somebody who can be at the bottom and still see the vision of the Oh, oh, I need a tag team preacher in here this morning. I need to get this mic to somebody. Oh, God. Can you be at the bottom of the pit having vision, have believing in the top of the vision? Oh, my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Belief. I gotta hurry up. Gets God's buy-in. Belief gets God's stamp of approval that confirms to the angels to dispatch your breakthrough out of the heavenlies. You know, you can order a package through some of these mail delivery companies and they will send you a notification when it's in route. When it's been dispatched from the main facility, it's because a request was made for the product. The client believes they're going to receive it through the payment that they made. I believe it's coming because I paid for it. See, 
Jesus is the client of all of our blessings because in him we live, move, and have our being. Well, the client already paid for it on the cross. You just got to believe that it's dispatched out of the heavens because Jesus has already paid the price for your breakthrough, the price for your healing. So I came to send a notification to you this morning. Ding! You just got a notification. Go ahead and open it up. I'll tell you in advance what it's going to say. The breakthrough is en route. Can I preach it like I feel it? Shout, my breakthrough is en route. My healing is en route. My increase is en route. Can I preach it like I feel it? Because belief dispatches the angels out of the warehouse of heaven, flying on chariots of fire, bringing down healings and increase right to your address oh somebody needs to hear me right now this blessing is not for the person over there or the person over there but this blessing today is coming to you i feel like preaching it up in here shout my blessing is on the way i came to prophesy over your life right now that you are one act of faith from a dispatch from heaven he's about to release it to you now. He's about to release it to you now. He's about to release it. I don't know what your it is. It may be a job. It may be shelter. It may be a husband. Oh God. Not that that person is an it. But it may be marriage. It may be freedom. It may be destiny. It may be confidence. I don't know what your it is. But the angels are moving. And they're in route this morning. Morning, huh? A whole caravan huh? and a host of angels huh? are coming down from heaven huh? with a breakthrough. I wish I had a church in here right now. Huh? I said they coming with a break. It's a breakthrough contract. Huh? It's a breakthrough blessing. Huh? Can I preach it like I feel it? Up in here. Uh, you say, what are you talking about, Apostle? Mark chapter 11, 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you'll have them. Now you're going to make me repeat that. Mark chapter 11, verse 24 says, Whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you have them, <laughs> and you will have them. Oh, can I preach it like that? So, you, shout, I believe that I'm blessed. Say it again. 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 I got a work to do this morning. I got a work to do this morning. See, you believe it now. Can't no devil in hell tell you you ain't blessed. Your hater can send you a text message right now. You'll be like, boy, I'm blessed. Get out of here. <laughs> that person you mad at, they can come in the room right now. Talk crazy. You can look at them and say, girl, I'm blessed. You better go in another room. <laughs> Woo! Because <laughs> see, you believe it. And now that that seed of belief is in you, that seed is in you. You don't understand. If you could ground right now, I just cultivated. We cultivated that seed in you. Do you not understand that seed is in there now? <laughs> I wish I had a witness. If you stay good ground, that thing going to bring forth 30, 60, and 100 fold of increase and blessing in your life. Because I believe it. Now I'm blessed. Who are you talking to? What are you talking about? I'm blessed. Oh, you need to hear me. You need to hear me. It's my breakthrough contract. And so, my brothers and sisters, as I close, I like the way Jesus 
took them through a divine, succinct, chronological, oh God, thank you, order to the breakthrough. He took them, he said, he said, uh, he said, yeah, Acts. No, 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 no. He said, Acts. Preach with me. He said, Acts. And it shall be given to you. But but he didn't leave it at the Acts. He 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 caused them to step into another dimension beyond the Acts. He said, Acts, and you shall receive. But then he said, Seek and you shall find. Okay, you got to understand what I'm saying. I asked for it. I know he sent it, but I got to find out where it is. Y'all okay. ain't hearing what I'm saying. He said, ask and you shall receive. He said, but after you ask, don't sit around like God ain't done it. He said, after you ask, oh, y'all think I'm playing, because the Greek word for the word uh, seek uh, means to look for it uh, as if you're going out to find it. Uh, oh, y'all ain't hearing me up in here. So after he said ask, he used the word zetio, uh, and the word zetio means look for it to show up. Uh, I wish I had two or three people up in here who could quit just asking God for something, but start looking looking around for it to show up any day now. Do I have somebody up in here who expecting God to do it? Who expecting to be blessed? Who expect to get the job? Who expect to walk in healing? Jesus said if you ask for it and you know God is sending it, why are you sitting around crying? Why are you sitting around whining? You ought to be on the hunt for that thing. God, what you do with it? Which way did you send it? Who did you send it to? Which job am I supposed to apply? to uh, which person am I supposed to talk to uh, I'm looking for it to show up in the day now uh, I'm looking for it today uh, I'm looking for it tomorrow uh, I'm looking for it tonight uh, do I have somebody uh, who getting ready to start uh, looking for what they asked for uh, I believe your Bible says uh, look to the hills uh, look to the hills uh, from which cometh your help uh, because all your help uh, comes from the Lord, do I have somebody who ain't just talking but looking? Do I have somebody who could put on bifocals of the spirit and begin to look into the spirit realm and say, which way did he go? Where is the blessing showing up at? It's not that God hadn't sent it. You just hadn't found it. Oh, I wish I was preaching to somebody who heard me. God sent it, but you won't get your butt up and go to church. God sent it, but you won't give your life to Jesus. God sent it, but you won't get in position of purpose in order to get it. God sent it, but you're sitting there at the wrong address, in the wrong place, in the wrong place geography, in the wrong city, in the wrong company, in the wrong attitude. I wish I had shot get, get up and go get it in Jesus name. Oh my God. Uh, see, you might think I'm just being homiletically Intuitive. It means, homiletic means you may think I'm just preaching out of my preaching personality. And uh, I'm just raising what could be a pseudo wise point. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm in the Bible. Because Jehovah Jireh threw a 75 yard pass from Egypt to Canaan. He had already threw the pass when he released Israel out of Egypt. The ball, the ball of milk and honey was thrown all the way to Canaan. <laughs> but they didn't want to go looking for it. They wanted it. 
but they weren't willing to go through the wilderness of waiting. Uh, they didn't want to keep marching uh, to get to Canaan uh, when the ball was already thrown. Uh, they was asking for it, uh, but they weren't looking for it. Uh, he told them, I'm throwing you a pass uh, over into Canaan. Uh, just keep running, uh, and when you get to Canaan, uh, the ball will be right there for a touchdown uh, in your life. Uh, they asked for it, uh, but they wasn't looking for it. Uh, but do I have somebody uh, who will ask for it uh, and keep on running uh, until it shows up? Uh, do I have somebody? Shout, God, throw me the ball, throw me the ball, throw me the ball, throw me the ball, God. Throw me the ball because I'm running. Throw me the ball because I believe. Throw me the ball because I'm going after it. Throw me the ball because I'm going to where the blessing is. Throw me the ball because I'm connecting with the people who you throw the blessing to. Throw me the ball because I'm going where I know you're telling me to go. Throw me the ball because I'm hanging with I know who you told me to hang with. I don't care what my color is. I don't care what my denomination is. I know you threw me the ball, and I'm going where it is. I got to quit. I got to quit. I got to quit. I got to quit. But prayer is your breakthrough agreement. And if you listen to me today, over 2,000 years ago, God threw the ball. He threw it directly to a place in Jerusalem called Galgotha, the mountain of skulls. We more eloquently call it Mount Calvary. It's the place where Jesus hung, bled, and died. The ball he threw was the ball of eternal life. Will you catch it this morning? Will you, will you catch God's loving pass? It was a handoff. <sighs> the quarterback Jesus on the cross, I'm not trying to belittle his crucifixion. I'm being relevant. Because the Bible says he took on our poverty. And passed us his righteousness. No, no, no. Right now. Right now is your opportunity. To just receive that pass of grace. And have eternal life. For you in this season. Right now. <laughs> right now. I could keep preaching. This is March Madness. You've got the ball. It's a buzzer beater. It's time for you to shoot. Can you accept Jesus in your heart right now? Can you come to him just as you are and receive the breakthrough covenant that whatever you ask for in his name, it should be given to you. That you can receive eternal life. That you can receive destiny, purpose, and salvation that God has in store. Will you do it right now? For those of you who sift and surf the internet and sift and surf but you know you're supposed to be a member of New Direction. You know it with everything in your heart. Will you, will you act today? You know it. Are you ashamed? Or somebody going to say this? Just because you're following the anointing, you're following the word of God, you're following the act of the Holy Spirit? Or will you step away and be bold without shame today? I said, that's it, man. That's it. I, I don't care. i got to get all the way into these blessings that's flowing out of this place out of that man and woman of God over there, I've got to get to what God has for me. If that's you right now, just accept Jesus. Just in the, in the, in the, in the page right there, I just got saved, I just got saved, I just got saved. Listen, if you will, if you will believe in your heart right now that Jesus is the Son of God, and just say out of your mouth, God, I love you. I accept Jesus as my Savior. Right there, you're born again, you're born again. You're born again. You're born again. You're made anew. A new creature. A new creation. But now your mind ain't delivered. Your body ain't delivered. That's why you got to be in the Bible teaching church and a Holy Spirit filled church so you can start getting delivered of strongholds and different things in your life so you can come up so that God can trust you with the greatness that he's put in you. Come on somebody. 
And you who's there who needs to be under this covering. All you're going to get is tidbits and little crumbs here and there as you just listen and listen. That's, that's fine until you're ready, but I'm telling you, it's time for the whole loaf. Why am I waiting around to be healed of something, delivered of something, or coming to greatness until tomorrow? It reminds me when, <laughs> I think when somebody was asked about the frogs, Pharaoh was asked, Moses asked him, when do you want these frogs gone? Pharaoh said, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow? Man, get these frogs out of here right now. It was frogs all over the palace, all over Egypt. Make sure they're gone this time tomorrow. No. Right now. I don't want to be out of purpose, out of the grace, out of the blessing. See, see, you got to understand how it works. When you covenant with a move of God, when you covenant and come on the anointing, immediately the blessings of that anointing flow down on your life. That anointing comes down on your life. Immediately. What are you waiting on? Immediately. You ready for a new dimension? Oh, God, I got to stop. Okay. Who Jesus? Because God, you look through man's eyes. God doesn't deal with that stuff. I'm not up here a man. I'm up here God's man. That means I'm set aside for this stuff. <laughs> you. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Because God has put a yes in the atmosphere for you. But it requires obedience. You got to get to where the past is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's offering time. Set your harvest in order that it may be dispatched from the heavenlies. As God give you power to get wealth, sow your seeds of faith and obedience so that he gives you direction to the wealth. He already gave you the power. But in Luke 6 and 38, he says, give and I'll give it back to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And although God gives us power to get wealth, it is the seed we sow that activates the direction to the wealth. Oh, y'all going to hear me in here. So according to his word, you must give that it be released back to you. Come on, somebody. I don't just want what I earn. Come on, somebody. I, 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 I want what is inherited unto me from the Father in Jesus Christ. See, if all I get in life is what I earn, I miss the supernatural blessings in my life. It's fine to get what I earn, but that ain't all that I want. I want to sow seed so that I can have compound interest on what I earn. Come on, somebody. I sow my seed of faith into the kingdom of God so that his supernatural compound interest is on my seed. And my harvest brings me into a place where my family is provided for, where I can sow and seed into the kingdom of God, where I can help those in need, where I can bless the land. Come on, somebody. So get your seed in order to bless your house finances in order for your harvest is in your seed. I'm Apostle Jarrell Beard. Shoot. I approve this message. God bless you. It's been good being with you this morning. I'm going to see you again. And when I do, I speak God's blessings over your life. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. We love you. God bless you. Bye, y'all.